God for the next one minute. He has been good for you. He has been good for me. He scored a goal for you to secure your victory. We're going to count to three and we begin to clap our hands and give him thanks because he is good. Don't start. Just wait. We're going to count to three. When I count to three, we're going to shout and we're going to begin to clap our hand and we're going to begin to celebrate him and remembering what he had done for our family and our children and the blessed future that await for us we are blessed and we are favored for life one come on put everything down begin to get ready two and at three we're going to go and three i want we clap our hand with shout of praise to the king of king and the lord of lord he is worthy for our praise he is worthy to be celebrated somebody shout in the house put your hand together jesus is the ruler of all jesus is the king of kings jesus is the savior of the world we give you thanks father thank you for such a great salvation thank you for sanctification thank you for uplifting our head thank you for removing the shame thank you for forgiving us thank you for this establishing us we give you thanks father this church celebrates you this church honor you every family honor you we shout praise to you in jesus mighty name hallelujah he is good and is here tonight he is good with us he has been good to you he has been good to you he has been good to you his faithfulness is forever he was faithful yesterday he is faithful today and he will be faithful forever hallelujah give a high five to your neighbor and tell him god has been good to us come on Tell somebody God has been good to us. Give them a high five and tell them God has been good to me. God has been good to me. Yes. God has been good. Give a high five to somebody else. Another person. God has been good to me. And I'm favored for life. I am favored for life. Hallelujah. We are favored for life. Cross point. We are favored for life. Hallelujah. Claudita, we are favored for life. Haramashi, Haramahanda. Pastor JB and Jenny, we are favored for life. Hallelujah. Bishop, we are favored for life. Is there anybody here this morning who is favored for life? If you are favored for life, lift up your hand and give a shout because you are favored for life. You are not going down, you are going up. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I am so charged. You may have a sit in the presence of the Lord. I am so charged with glory. I'm so charged with his anointing. This season is like no other. Grace revolution. We are not finished yet, brothers and sisters. We still have a couple of months here. Grace revolution. God say he will do in a year what was supposed to be done in five years. We've seen in the life of many people. As like Pastor JB said last week, we continue to celebrate him because we know the year is not over. And God, his word will not fall down on the ground without him fulfilling it. That's where we are standing. I'm still expecting few things from the Lord before the end of this year. He has done so much. The list is long. But I'm so grateful that we are standing here together as a body. Refusing to bow down to the noise and to the destruction of the world. And to the whispers of the enemy. We are going up. We are not going down. The Lord is stronghold. He is the stronghold of my life. Whom shall I fear? He is the shield around me. He is my buckler. Hallelujah. Whom shall I fear? And I'm so excited that boldness are overwhelming my life. And I want to appreciate the men and women in this church families for your faithfulness, keeping your eyes on Jesus Christ. And we are ready to do his will at any cost to bring pleasure to him because we fear him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We started last week with the first fruit, the mystery of the first fruits. Favor for life. Talking about the feast of harvest. This is a revelation that Cross Point has embraced. And if you are not here, please listen to the service of last week. And if you are here, go listen to it again. So your spirit will be charged. This is not a playing around time. This is a time to tell the devil we are not ashamed to follow God. That we are called to obey his word. And we will obey it to the letter. Hallelujah. 
The Bible says that God is looking for a man and a woman. He's seeking those who tremble at his word. Meaning those when they hear his word, they surrender and they obey regardless. The, the word of God says God honored those who honored him. But those who despise them, he treat them also with less esteem. He treat them little. In other words, we have decided to honor God with the first fruit of our incomes and we will do it gladly. God, you deserve even more than that. Proverbs 23, verse 26. Proverbs 23, verse 26. Give me your heart, my son. And let your eyes delight in my ways. I spoke to you last week. This is the mystery of the greatest offering. It is first and foremost getting the place where you can offer your heart to God. First and foremost. God is not in the business to take your money. God is in the business to bless you. But before you get into that dimension of overflowing blessing, God wants your heart first. That's why he declared, give me your heart first and let your eyes be on my ways. We have decided as the body, to decide it as a family, to obey God regardless of what it's costing. This is obedience. We are children of obedience, but God wants our heart first. You heard me say it as well last week, that the value and the worth of your offering has to do first with the offering of your heart. So the value and the worth of your offering is determined literally by the offering of your heart to the Lord. God wants your heart. I mentioned number one, few principles. Number one, love always gives. We are lovers. How many lovers are here? Lift up your hand. You love the Lord. Just lift up your hand across the place. Lift up your hand. I love the Lord. God says, the lovers that you are, you are a giver. Because God so loved the word that he gave his only begotten son. God is a lover. Number two principle God spoke to us, that your greatness is not determined by what you keep, but rather your greatness is determined by your contribution. Your contribution is what you contributed that make you powerful. What you contribute, that's what make you wealthy. What you contribute, that's what make you rich. This is not a generation of takers. We are a generation of givers. That's what Crosspoint is. We are a generous people who trust God and believe in him as we acknowledge that everything we have has been given to us by God. Number three, God spoke to me years ago, Elijah, whatever leave your hands for me will never live your life as we are preparing this celebration of feast of the first fruit for the 27th of january 2019 you don't want to miss that put it in your calendar 27th of january 2019 Cross point, we are drawing the land. We are building a master memorial stone for the Lord and for the generation to come. That from that day forth, cross point will go year after year in celebrating the feast of the first fruit, where we're going to bring our income to the Lord for the first month of the year, knowing that we will not lack, knowing famine will not see our families and nor our descendants. Hallelujah. Number four principle, giving is not a spiritual business endeavor or it's not a spiritual business venture, but rather it's an expression of gratitude, of love, and honor. Somebody say gratitude. Everybody say gratitude. Love and honor. We're going to say it together. Gratitude, love, and honor. One more time. Gratitude, love, and honor. That's what the mystery of the giving of the heart to God is about. And that's what the principle of the first three is about. It's about gratitude, love, and honor. Gratitude, love, and honor. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ spoke in the Beatitude, Matthew 5, 6. He gave us the three pillars by which a mature Christian or a lover and a person who has gratitude or who honor him has to walk by. Those three pillars are number one, he said, when you pray. Number two, when you fast. And number three, 
when you give. Those are the three major pillars. I know when you pray and when you fast, we know it, we've done it. We have it in Eden, we have it in Encounter, we have it in Frontline, we have it in the Intercession, we have it in the Worship, we have it in different places in this house. We are a house of prayer. When you fast, we fast. When you give, we give. But God want to take us to another level in the dimension of giving. That third pillar need to be reinforced. That third pillar need to be established. That's why I'm introducing unto you a message that I have not spoken to you since the beginning of this ministry. It is the mystery and the blessing of the first fruit offering. Hallelujah, somebody. The Bible says in Psalm 35, his favor is for life. That's where the title of this message came from. Favor for life. His favor is for life. And in his prosperity, he shall not be moved. Oh my God. The favor for life from God is open us. And in our prosperity, we will not be moved. God said, I will bless you and nobody will be able to take it away. God said, I will open doors for you and nobody will be able to close it. God said, I will heal you and that devil will not be able to come back. God said, I will open your womb and you will conceive children. God said, I will set you up and not set you down. And nobody will take it away. Like Obadiah 17 said, unto Mount Zion there shall be healing and there shall be holiness and deliverance and the house of Jacob will possess their possession. Your house will possess your possession. The house of Crosspoint will possess the, the possession. The house of the Asante will possess the possession. Your house will possess your possession. Meaning there are certain possessions that we have not possessed yet. But the power of the first fruit, those possessions will be discovered. Those possessions will be unveiled. Those possessions will locate us. This is the season and the time to draw the line for your generation to come. Because there are possessions coming your way even as I speak and you receive the word of the Lord. Let them locate you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The blessing of the Lord makes rich and it had no sorrows. They will come without sorrows because you have obeyed the principle of the first fruit that opened up the windows of heaven. Pouring out a blessing upon you, you can contain it. He says, favor will be for life and in your prosperity you will not be moved. I don't know who I'm talking about this morning. In your prosperity, you will be established and you will not be moved. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so is the favor for life will surround your family and the families, the children, your children's lives in Jesus' name. I told you last week, destiny is a matter of revelation. Destiny is a function of revelation. It's not a function of connection. And that's why many people are frustrated. They are convinced if I know this person and I'm connected to this person and if I'm a friend. No, let me tell you. Destiny is a function of revelation. When you are ignorant in the kingdom, you will remain a slave and you will remain a victim. But when a man and a woman acquire revelation, he acquire command. When you acquire revelation, you acquire command. When you acquire revelation, you acquire command. Harabo sata ya baba. It is the time we rise to acquire command, to acquire authority, so we can lead our generation into the places of wealth and abundance and peace. Harabo sanda. That's why take note. 27 of January. Don't miss. I told you last time, if you die, I will resurrect you. You will be a part of this. Then after you can go to see the Lord later. Because this is something we are setting up for all the generation to come. As far as is the organization and the ministry of Crosspoint. We have never done it before. You will look back and you will say, I was a part of this pioneering art. This is a pioneering art. This is a pathfinder art. Uh, act. This is the type of act like Joshua did as he built an altar in the Jordan and an altar outside of the Jordan. And he said this will be a remembrance for our children that they may know that the Lord has delivered us from this. We want to set up this as a memorial for the lifespan and the destiny of Cross Point and you are a part of it. And therefore it will be a memorial for your own family and the destiny of your family. Don't miss it! Don't miss it. Don't let somebody report it to you. 
Don't let somebody tell you about what happened. Don't let you be an echo hearer. I want you to be active. I want you to be a part of it. So we can come and pray. We can come and fast. And we can come and honor the Lord with our first fruits. Offerings. I am looking for that. It's like January 27 is so long. Prepare for it. And be a part of it. Proverbs 3 verse 4 said. Proverbs 3 verse 4. And you will find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. That's what happened. When you honor God with your first fruit, favor in heaven, favor on the earth. You will have favor with God and you have favor with man. Your life will cease to be a reproach. You will no longer be a laughing stock for your neighbors and your generation. But rather, he said you will receive high esteem. Oh, Rabbi Yabagala. The people who mock you will have to count with you. The people who count you out will have to consider you. That's what God says. Don't miss it. Because first fruit will bring a cure to your life frustration. That's what first fruit does. Verse 9 to 10 said, still in Proverbs 3, Honor the Lord with your possessions. And with the first fruits of all of your increase, we honor the God with worship. We honor God with fasting. We honor God with prayer. But Lord said, Cross Point, families of Cross Point, you that are purchased by my precious blood, honor me also with the first fruit of your incomes. First fruits. We decide we will not eat our first fruit January. We're going to introduce something with a sacrificial first fruit. In other words, I explained to you. Your first paycheck in January belongs to the Lord. It doesn't matter how much money it is. From zero dollar, point five, one dollar, to whatever you make, God give you that. It's God who provided it for you. He gives seed to the sower and food to the eater. You will not have got that job if it was not for him. This is another way for us to declare before principalities that our allegiance is to our divinity, Jehovah the great God. He is the one who lifted up our head when everybody was pushing us down. He opened the door and gave us a job and took us from the mighty clay and put us upon the solid rock. So we want to acknowledge that. That God gave me that money. And before that, therefore, I will not eat it. I will bring it to the Lord. Put them in the hand of the priest. That he can wave it before the Lord as an offering. And bless you. That all your 11 men that follow. You will gather more than you have ever gathered before. Let what say here. I hope somebody is catching my flow. And receiving this by faith in the spirit. He said in still in verse 9 now verse 10 he said when you bring your first fruits your bonds will be filled with plenty my goodness your bonds your accounts your investments will be filled with plenty and your vase will overflow with new wine this is favor for life new wine you know all the one days are over you will not go anymore from the story of the past from story of the past no 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 you will move from glory to glory from faith to faith from increase to increase and that's why i feel in my spirit even right now i'm prophesying that this as we step out that you will overflow with new wine new revelation new in the name of jesus christ of nazareth that your brands will overflow in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Father, I receive it for myself that my barns will overflow. Hallelujah. We will not eat of the first fruit because it belongs to you. Thank you, Jesus. When you bring your first fruit to the Lord, you are telling God, Lord, if it was not you, I would not have anything anyway. I trust you. Friends, this is the offering of the lovers. This is the offering for the lovers. You, you can't do this just because you're nice. You will have to give your heart first to God as the first offering before you can give him your income. And so when we do that, we honor God. When we do that, 
We are showing God how much we trust him, how much we love him, how grateful we are. We are testifying that he is our source and the source for our families. We are telling him, without you, we will not have an income anyway. We will not have children. We will not have families. Our businesses will not be here. Without you, we have no investment. So in the first place, we will have nothing but because of you. That's what it is. Let me give you a few blessings now of the first fruit. This is the time now you got to get excited. Few blessings of the first fruit offering. I want to challenge you, sons and daughters in this house. On the 27th of January, blessed be the name of the Lord for those who will bring their first paycheck of two weeks. Really, it's the first fruit. We celebrate God for that. But sons and daughters in this house and those who are listening to me, let's step up to move into a sacrificial first offering. We'll bring one month, one month income to the Lord. One month's return on your investment to the Lord. One month's return on your shares, your business to the Lord. Because that business also belongs to God. Don't need to consecrate your business. Don't need to consecrate your investments. Don't need to consecrate all the different fields where you are planted seed, expecting a harvest. Not just your income you get from your boss, but every investment, every placement, every business, regardless of the variety of it, you that fields you will bring the first income benefits of that month to the lord 27 of january consecrate your business by giving the first fruit to the lord consecrate your investments by giving the first fruit of the return of the month to the lord hallelujah that's what we're going to be doing friends here's what this sacrificial first fruit does for you number one according to psalm 65 11 in the NLT, he will crown your years with a bountiful harvest. Did you hear what I said? When you bring your sacrificial first fruit to the Lord, one benefit here, he will crown your year, the rest of the year. He will crown the rest of your year with a bountiful harvest. I rather give my sacrificial offering of one man to the Lord, knowing the 11 men that follow, God will crown them with a bountiful harvest. In other words, you will not go in famine. You will not go in lacking. Rather, your barn will overflow and your vase will overflow with new wine. Favor for life will be your portion. You will receive what you could have never received. I will bless you and crown you with a bountiful harvest. It continues by saying, even your hard path will overflow with abundance. In other words, the area of your life that were dry, that you were not even expecting this year for you to draw anything from, Rather, you are thinking it will cost you something or take away something from you. God says, even those areas will overflow. Meaning, every field that was barren will conceive. Every field that was not bringing a, a, a return for all this year you've been investing or you have been doing that business. Even those areas that you've been sustaining, that have been costing you money. God said, those dry areas will overflow also with abundance. And I prophesy now to you who have been having those dry places in your marriage, in your business, in your investment, that have been costing you your energy, that have been costing you your time, that have been costing you your night, that have been costing you your sleep, that have been costing you money. I prophesy under the power of the first fruit offering, they shall overflow with abundance in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. They shall produce no more barrenness, no more dryness, no more in Jesus' name. They will not cost you. You know, I know by the spirit and by experience how many people are having things that are costing them. 
It's a maintenance system even more than that. They are drying. They are dragging all the goods out of you. You got to maintain that business. I got to maintain that business. I got to maintain that investment. I prophesy that is over. What was not working will begin to work. What was not producing will begin to produce. What was not running will begin to run. What was costing you will begin to be a source of overflow. According to Psalm 65, even your hard places will run with abundance. Lord, your word is true. Hi, man. I don't mind me. I just feel this so much in my spirit. I got to preach it. I got to push it forth so your spirit can grab it because the head will not comprehend this thing. But your spirit is grabbing something. Oh, how we trust you. So number one, he will crown your year with a bountiful harvest. Your dry path will overflow with abundance. Number two, when you honor God with your first fruit of sacrifice, you will see you will never decrease. I said, you will not decrease. You will increase more and more. Harabasha. According to Psalm 115, verse 14, 15. Psalm 115, verse 14, 15. It said, he will increase you more and more. You and your children. When you give the first fruit of sacrifice, God said, I will increase you more and more. You thought that I was loaded. No, no, no. You will go from loading to loader. If you think you are rich, you will go from rich to richer. If you think that you are blessed, you will go from blessed to more blessed. He said, I will increase you more and more and will not stop to you. Even your children will be increased. We've been leaving these promises hanging in the air. But it's time that it fall upon somebody. I say it's time those promises fall upon somebody. It's time that those blessings fall upon somebody. It's time that that increase fall upon somebody. And you and your children, I shall increase more and more. Ooh, I love that. That's mean the way you see me this year. Don't come expecting to see me the same. Because I will have been increased more and more. Hallelujah. That's a blessing number two. It is increasing you more and more and your children also. Hallelujah. Shanda. Number three. When we enter in this first fruit sacrifice, he say, I will increase your honor and your greatness. And I will comfort you on every side. That's what Psalm 71, 31 say. God said, if you dare, dare to obey him and step out to bring your sacrificial first offering, meaning one month of your income, one month of your benefit and return on every field in which God has given you seed to plant, every area you believe is God will introduce this to you and bless you with. God says, I will increase your honor. I will increase your greatness, Arabo Sataya Baba. And I will bless you on every side. Woo! 71 31. Psalm 71 31. I will bless you on every side. On every side. That means there will be no area related to you in your jurisdiction that does not get blessed. Every side. On the left, you are blessed. On the right, you are blessed. In the front, you are blessed. In the back, you are blessed. In the top, you are blessed. When you turn, you are blessed. In the city, you are blessed. In the field, you are blessed. With your friend, you are blessed. At work, you are blessed. In your family, you are blessed. In the church, you are blessed. In your ministry, you are blessed. In your endeavor, you are blessed. In every project, you are blessed. You sleep, you are blessed. You wake up, you are blessed. In the morning, you are blessed. At 12, you are blessed. At midnight, you are blessed. It's raining, you are blessed. It's cold, you are blessed. It's hot, it's blessed. No matter. In the summer, you are blessed. In Africa, you are blessed. In Germany, you are blessed. In Europe, you are blessed. In America, you are blessed. With the white, you are blessed. With the black, you are blessed. With the small, you are blessed. With the high, you are blessed. You are blessed. I declare blessed for life. Favor for life. Shakarabatakala. Lendo lokota ya baba. I am blessed. And it has nothing to do with what I wear in the physical. It has to do with what I wear in the invisible, in the spirit. A garment of blessing. Increase my greatness, oh God. Somebody shout, increase my honor. Increase my honor. Increase my honor. And bless me on every side. 
Bless me, God, on every side. Bless my children on every side. Bless my business on every side. Bless my marriage on every side. Bless my ministry on every side. Bless my dreams on every side. Bless my project on every side. I am blessed and highly favored on every side. Somebody put your hand together. Let's give a clap offering to the Lord for his blessing on every side. Harabakaya. You don't want to miss that. Bless on every side. Increase of honor. Increase of greatness. Increase your children. Why will we miss that? For one paycheck. For one paycheck. I will take a chance on God. I will take a chance on his word that is establishing the heavens and on earth. His word will not pass away. All will pass away, but his word remain. I need to take a chance on God. I will take a chance. I will dare to step out into a sacrificial first fruit offering. Let's go number four benefits that we see in the first fruit. Number four. And we have spoken about that one. He said, in Psalm 89, 17, when you bring your first fruit of sacrifice, a full paycheck, 27th of January, we will be here, as the priests of this house, with my children and sons, Levites, we will take the offering. We will waver before the Lord and we'll bless you. And I will give strict and direct directive to our board or what will be done with such. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Look at what he said. He will favor you and set you on high. And in your favor, your horn is exalted. The word horn here is it's a, a speak of strength. A speak of strength. That's Psalm 89, 17. He said, I will leap you up on high. When other people are shouting and crying, there is a going down. You will be able to scream, there is a going up. There is a going up. You will no longer remain in the bottom. God said, when you bring the sacrifice of a first fruit offering, I will bring you up on high. I will lift you up. I will establish you. You will no longer be ignored or unseen. Your veil will be broken and your glory will be revealed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And he will give you strength. Number five, when you honor the Lord with your first fruits, he will cause you to abound in all things and lack nothing. This one got my attention. You know, the Bible does not exaggerate. It tells you the way it is. He said it will make you abound in all things. In fact, he said he will cause you. That's the, the Hebrew word. He will cause you. You know, cause mean, <laughs> you know, stop working and doing muscles. No, God will cause you. He will put things. He will give you energy. He will awaken within you whatever is needed and position everything that is conducive for your success. He will cause you. Thank you, Jesus. He will cause you to abound in all things. All things. Somebody say all. Everybody shout all things. Say it again. All things. One more time. All things. It will make you abound in all things. Say God will make me abound in all things. Say it again and believe it. God will make me abound in all things. All things. All things. That all is a blank check. All things. All things. In all things. He will remove the frustration from the work of my hand. Jesus. Sometimes I see people toiling. I mean they toil. They work hard and work hard. Yet they do not achieve any plan that they thought they would have achieved already. That's frustration. That's frustration. It's like you're laboring and laboring and working. But your money does not give you the opportunity to fulfill your greater desires. So why? Frustration become your portion. The first fruit sacrificial has power to put an end to that. God says, 
I will remove the frustration from the work of your hands. I will bless the work of your hands. Frustration will be removed from the work of your hands. Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 9. I'll give you verses. You understand. The first one has power to remove frustration from the work of your hand. So you stop working hard and getting little and doing little. Yet you're working hard. But when you bring your sacrifice, the first fruit of sacrifice, God said frustration will be uplifted. Frustration will be uplifted. Thank you, Jesus. Number six. When you give your sacrificial first fruit, this is the verse I was looking for last time for you. God says, he will cause his blessing to remain upon you and your household forever. <laughs> Ezekiel chapter 44 verse 30. I will cause my blessing to remain upon you and your household. You see, there is a lot of craziness happening in families. And we pray and we fast and we counsel. I mean, you do it all. The end of divorcing, continuous fight. Every little thing triggers an atomic bomb in the house. It is a scattering. It is displacing. It is fighting. It's cursing. It's insulting. It's dividing. It's separating. God said the first fruit will bring a blessing upon you and your household. The devil is running now in Jesus' mighty name. That devil was whispering and speaking to you to divorce and to separate and to hurt one another. He's running now in Jesus' name. Let me put it simply. When you honor God with your first fruit offering, you will enjoy life forever. <laughs> A forever enjoyment of life. And your children will never be last. Because you put God first with your first fruit, your children will never be last. We like to quote this verse. We will not be the tail, but we are the head. You, you read the context. These people just brought the first fruit offering to God, a feast of celebration. And God now speak the blessing upon Israel and say, you will not be the tail. You will be the head. You will not be last. You will be the first. Why? Because they put God first with the first fruit. Thank you, Jesus. We want to enjoy his favor for life on us and our children. Number seven, blessings when we bring our first fruit of sacrifice to the Lord. He will usher you in the realm of overflow and plenty. As we read in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 to 10, it said that your barns will overflow. They will overflow with plenty, your barn. That can speak of your investment. That can speak of your business account. That can speak of your own account. That can speak of anything where you planted. God said you will no longer reap little anymore. Mandegash. Am I speaking to somebody? I say God said you will not reap low anymore. You will not reap little anymore. You will reap overflow. Overflow means it is full until it's falling. That's what it means. That means if somebody was standing by you, it would fall on them. You become a carrier of prosperity. You become a carrier of favor. You become a carrier of blessing. Blessed to be a blessing. You overflow. I want that over my life. You become a famine breaker. Like Joseph. Thank you, Jesus. Number eight. When we bring our sacrificial first fruit to the Lord, the 27th January, I'm repeating, I don't want you to miss it. I said, you don't miss this. If you die, we bring it back. If I die, bring me back to do this thing. I have to set this for us and our children for it to be a memorial for the life of every family in Cross Point. I was saying number eight. Thank you, Jesus. When we bring that first fruit, this is what God will do. He will establish you in the place of not lacking in good things. Now, this is not just lacking in things. This is not lacking in good things. According to Psalm 34, 9 to 10. Psalm 34, 9 to 10. Fear the Lord, you is godly people. For those who fear him 
will have all they need. That's what it says here. The other version said, for those who fear him, they will lack not in good things. Father, I pray that as for us and our children, we will not lack in good things in Jesus' name. So do you see now how powerful the sacrificial offering of first fruit is? So powerful that it will cause even the little to multiply and increase miraculously, miraculously, miraculously. We are inviting you and everybody to step into the dimension of the supernatural. This is an increase that will come to you, not just because of your paycheck, but it will bless you on every area and you will lack not in any good thing. That is miraculous. That is supernatural increase. It will bring how you out of debt. It will break the spirit of starvation out of your life. Famine will be uplifted from your life. Lack will be lifted up. The mockery will be lifted up the reproach will be lifted up it will cause you to have provision in all your needs they will be met they will be left over left over so that you can be a blessing for others is there anybody here who ever dream about that just like me you are so blessed no one around you is in lack because you become a blesser you are blessed so much that you bless other people let me read this portion of scripture to show you the power of multiplication and increase of the first fruits second king chapter 4 verse 42 44 second king chapter 4 42 44 now a man came to baal shalisha and brought the man of god bread of the first fruits 20 loaves of bare barley and fresh ears of grain in his sack. And he said, Give them to the people that you may eat. His attendant said, What? Will I set this before a hundred men? But he said, Give them to the people that they may eat. And thus says the Lord, They shall eat and have some left over. So he said it before them, and they ate and had some left over according to the word of the Lord. My God, you know this man who brought his first fruit of 20 barley, uh, barley bread, 20, only 20, to the priest. The priest blessed it. And of course, there were so many people, 100 men, without counting probably the others. And the priest said, now, give to the people to eat. His servant said, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Did you count these men? They, they, they don't eat, eat. One man can eat five of this bread or even the, the 20. We have only 20. The first fruit was 20 barley bread. Barley bread. And, and he said, give them. To, come on. You, you can cut it. I might speak to somebody. Is that the way you feel when you get your income? When you look at all the expenses you need to take care of and you look at your income, and they, no, no, this one will not work. Listen to me. That income, small or big or range, whatever it may be, whatever it is achieving for you, whatever is not able to achieve, that first income is not yours. Bring it to the house of the Lord. That will bless it. That all your other income will overflow. Listen to me. Now, the priest blessed and said, give it to them to eat. The Bible said they ate and there was left over. Why? Because we're the first fruits. And the power of multiplication and increase of the first fruits. When you bring your first fruit to the house of the Lord, all your other income or return will multiply to take care of all your needs and there will be left over. How? Maraga yagalagadagash. With the natural eye, the guy said, hold it. I did the math. I know. Even me, myself, I can eat those 20 little breads. There's 100 men here. You need more than that. He said, when you give your first fruit, you will have more than enough. When you give your first fruit, you will have more than enough. You will have even left over. Let that be true for you. That your income will meet all your need. And you can have more than enough to have left over in Jesus' name. That's the power of the first fruits. Number nine blessings that come with the first fruit. It will cause you to never diminish or decrease 
according to Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 19. For them will proceed thanksgiving and the voice of those who celebrate. Oh, celebration is coming your way. Thanksgiving is coming your way. Just because of the first fruit, God will bless you. You will have thanksgiving and you will have a celebration. A voice of celebration will be restored. There's many people here who have not celebrated in a long time. No, I'm not talking about coming and dancing before the Lord. I'm not talking about the celebration when we are having a worship service. I'm talking about you are so blessed that there is such a joy in your belly. You are laughing like a crazy man in the street, walking in the street of Calgary, laughing and people think that you lost your head not knowing you are celebrating. I'm not talking about an organized celebration like a wedding. No, 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 no. You are in the seat train, you are in the bus, you are driving your car. When other people are insulting you and giving you the finger, you are having joy coming from within. Why? Because you are celebrating because of the increase, because of the multiplication that have come from the Lord by the power of sacrificial first fruit. Celebration shall be restored. And I prophesy for somebody, the days of celebration has come. Your days of celebration has come. Your days of thanksgiving has arrived. In Jesus' name. You will recover your voice of celebration. And he continued, still in Jeremiah 30, 19. He continued, and I will multiply them and they will not diminish ah, yeah, 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 yeah. and I will also honor them and they will not be insignificant don't you want this brothers and sisters he said when you bring the first fruit to him he will bless you so much that people you to see you small will have to cease to see you small you will begin to carry significance significance Respect will be restored. Honor will be restored. Your reproach will be uplifted. I will multiply them and they will not diminish. Father, I receive that for my family. I receive that for you. I receive that for this house. You will increase and not diminish. 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 Will and not diminish. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I will honor you and you will no longer be insignificant. Woo! Your business can no longer be insignificant. It's not about what is written on the billboard and how many commercials you've done. This one, it is God showcasing your business. God showcasing your case. God showcasing you on the billboard of heaven. Woo! You shall be noticed. And you will no longer remain in significance. Listen to me. Something I know, I know. Something pivotal. Something radical. Something. Through these first fruits, remember, we are the one God has honored to give us the privilege to establish this honor pillar. Of the first fruit in the life of cross point. I hope you're catching me. God didn't do it last year and He didn't wait to do it in two years. No, no, no. He waited until you were here. You, 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 you. He waited until you were here in this moment. Oh my God. Because God trusts and believes in you that you will not take this lightly. Worship people, you will not take it lightly. Leaders, men and women of God, people of cross point, families of the Most High. God is entrusting us as this generation to establish this memorial, this principle that will regulate honor in the lifespan of cross point for the generation to come. We can do small. That's why I'm, 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 I'm just believing you will step out by faith like me for the sacrificial so we can make a big memorial that the other generation to come will have a reference. Who will have a reference? He will multiply us and will not diminish. He will honor us and will not be insignificant. Our children will not be. So something pivotal, something Jurassic for a generation impact generational impact, generational footprint, generational mark, 
generational all mark. That's what God is entrusting us to live in the life of cross point. And I believe that mark is ready to be manifested in our family lines. Not just the church life, but our family, our descendants as well. And I pray you receive that in Jesus' name. Number 10, when we bring our first fruits offering, sacrificial, Psalm 32 verse 8 says, the Lord says, I will guide you along the best pathways. Woo! Not the good, not the so-so. The best pathway. God said, when you bring your first fruit sacrificial offering, it will lead you in path where the best opportunities and encounters are. I will bring you along the best pathway for your life. Not for one month, for your life. And I will advise you and watch over you. I feel emotional just listening and hearing to the word of the Lord. He will guide me on the best pathway. How many times we, we ask for counseling, you know, should I do this, should I do that? Should I get this job? Should I invest here? Should I not? What should I do? No, no, no. God said, I will guide you upon the best pathways. I will order up your steps, not on so-so, but the best pathways. And I will advise you. God become your counselor. Let me read this one to you. In Psalm 89, verse 15 to 17. Psalm 89, 15, 17. How blessed are the people who know the joyful sound of the first fruit offering. <laughs> Did you catch this? How blessed are the people, me and you, who know the joyful sound not the pain. The joyful sound of the first offering. It's written in the Bible, friends. The joyful sound. That means the first fruit has power to bring celebration, as I was talking to you first. It's a joyful sound. All blessed are the people who know the joyful sound of the first fruit offering. Oh Lord, they walk in the light of your countenance. Verse 17 said, By your righteousness they are exalted, and by your favor their horn is exalted. The joy of righteousness, the joy of abundance, the joy of the first fruits, the joy of loving God, trusting God, honoring God. How blessed are the people who know. You are blessed to know that, and I am blessed to know that. This is what will cut your life. This is what will catapult your business. This is what will catapult the church. That's what will catapult the ministry. Your business, your family, and bring you monumental, I mean monumental achievement. Achievement that will outlive you. That's what I'm speaking about. Generational blessings. And I'm going to close here soon. But let me touch quickly about this offering of the first fruit for generational, talking about your firstborn. Thank you, Jesus. Exodus chapter 34, verse 19, 20 said, listen to this. Somebody may ask me, okay, if I was in the first marriage and then I had a children and then, you know, that covenant didn't work out and I divorced and later on, I remarry and then with my new wife, uh, I have other children. So what is this firstborn thing? Okay, let's read in Exodus 34, verse 19 to 20 to settle the matter. The first offspring of every womb belong to me. Did you see that? The first offspring of every Womb. It says womb. Man is not your matter here. Woman, it is yours. Of every womb. It didn't say of every seed. The man carry seed. The woman carry womb. 
but bring to me the first offspring of every womb. Therefore, if you have one ch children, you have children with your first wife, that firstborn is from one womb, is a firstborn. This other one with this wife also is another firstborn because it's the first from all of the womb. I say first offspring. Now, who is inheriting? That is the decision of the father. Ishmael was the firstborn from the womb of Sarah. Isaac was the firstborn from the womb of Sarah. Ishmael was the firstborn from the womb of Agar. Sorry. But God, by divine providence, raised Isaac to be the heir. So when we talk about firstborn, don't be in a hurry to begin to say, who's going to inherit from me? Even in the natural, when a father is wise, he doesn't give his inheritance to a firstborn if he's a crazy one. You understand? That is, has nothing to do with what we are talking about. I'm talking about the one who broke out of the womb is a firstborn. And the devil is after such. So, the point is, the first offspring from every womb belong to me. That's what God said. And you shall redeem all the firstborn. None shall appear before me empty-handed. In other words, when you bring to consecrate your firstborn, you bring an offering. Don't come empty-handed. Because the first offspring is the first fruit. He has to be redeemed. I'm not talking about salvation. Look at all the firstborn are struggling in this earth. On the 27th of January, I'm the firstborn of the womb of my mother. Many of you are sitting here also, you are the firstborns of the womb of your parents. Give an offering to the Lord as the first fruit that God will bless you and bless your generations because you belong to him. Hallelujah. Consecrated to him. Let me give you some example of first fruit of the firstborn in the scripture. Israel is said to be God's own first fruit. In Jeremiah 2, 3, he said, Israel was holy to the Lord, the first fruit of his harvest. And he said, all who devour or harm Israel, I will help them guilty. And disaster will overtook them, declared the Lord. Number one, God said, because Israel is the first fruit and is being consecrated to him, if you touch Israel, God deal with you. Thank you, Jesus. Abraham offered his own first fruit, Isaac, from the womb of Sarah to the Lord. Anna gave also Samuel to the Lord as the first fruit of an offering. Elkanah was the father, but Elkanah has other women with other children. But as far as Samuel is concerned, Samuel is the first fruit from the womb of Sarah. He was given to Eli as the first fruit because he belongs to the Lord. The other women didn't do that. They kept their own kid. They didn't bring them as the first fruit, dedicate them to the love of an offering. Nobody ever mentioned them. But as for Samuel, he became the prophet that God was looking for. His word never fell down on the ground without accomplishing what it was sent for. Because he was dedicated and consecrated to the Lord with a first fruit offering. Thank you, Jesus. Even Joseph and Mary gave Jesus to the Lord with dove because they were poor. They couldn't bring an offering, but they couldn't enter the presence of the Lord with a first fruit without, with empty handed. They bring dove and turtles. But here we are in this generation. Oh, we live under grace. Praise the Lord. We don't need to give anything anymore. It's not true. Honoring God is not of the Old Testament. Honoring God is a lifestyle now and forever. Manoah and his wife, that was the mother of Samson. They gave Samson as the first fruit to the Lord. He became the mighty judge of Israel. 
a Nazarite consecrated to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. As I told you, the first fruit offering, first and foremost, is to honor God with your first. Because you have placed God first in your life. If God is not first in your life, you will debate this theologically and you will run away. But if God is first in your life and you trust him, you love him, you honor him. Let's go, God. Let's go. Let's go. Let's do it. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to remember that. Once you dedicate the firstborn, all the other children are covered. Thank you, Jesus. Next time I will share with you the threefold blessing that come upon the sons or the offspring or the daughter that are consecrated to the Lord as the first fruit. It is just powerful. God spoke those words to Abraham. Once he gave Isaac as the first fruit, he spoke from heaven. And he gave them the lists of them one by one. I will multiply you. You will possess the gates of the enemies. I hope somebody is hearing me this morning. This is the revelation, the key that we need for our next move. This is the revelation of the key that God is giving to you and your family. So you can have a turnaround in your family life. So you can draw the line and set a new pace for your descendants. Let's rise up on our feet right now. Let's rise up on our feet. Everybody, stand up on your feet right now. Thank you, Jesus. I'll just invite the worship team. Just come in right away. Just the instruments. Just rise up on your feet right now. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to turn the service here very soon to Pastor JB. But I really want to stand up on our, hey, hey, our feet right now. Everybody stand up. This is a holy moment. As we begin to prepare the atmosphere. We will tell God, yes, here we are, Lord God Almighty. Children of obedience. There's nothing we have that you didn't give to us. There's nothing we own that you didn't give to us. Open up. That's the hidden things and blessing in our destiny that we've been missing for all these years. Lead us on the path where we'll encounter great opportunities, the best, the best pathways. Crown our years with abundance harvest. Even the dry ways, let them begin to carry crops. All the hidden seed that we have planted in different areas, we will command tonight for them to come out of the ground because we are setting ourselves for a great feast of harvest. Our families will benefit of it. Get everybody begin to get ready. Begin to play the piano in the back as you begin to play. Let's begin now to prepare the atmosphere. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to call Pastor Kofi as well. Come and get the microphone. I'm going to relay this thing to you. Pastor JB, you will lead after. But I will want to ask everybody to stand up on your feet now. Thank you, Jesus. This is a holy moment. Mako tekele batakashi kitekele. Rando ko sike palaketo ndoro basakata. Bronde karako to shitele badaketo rosanta yaba. Just open our mouth and begin to pray right now. Begin to thank God. Begin to celebrate him. Begin to let this word become anew in you. Let it begin to work in your heart. Remember, the first fruit carry a voice of joy, a joyful voice. It carry a voice of celebration. It will lead you on your Best, best pathway. He will secure for you thanksgiving, testimonies. Marango roko shikele mandaga ya marako tekere abada. Lord, we stand as a family, as a whole. And we say it as for us and our children, we will obey your word. We will obey your word. We get a hold of the revelation of the first fruit. We will obey your word.
God and we'll see the abundance, we'll see your hand move, we'll see your favor overcome us in the name of Jesus. Everybody lift up your voice, begin to pray right now. Pastor Kofi, Pastor JB, all the leaders, all the intercessors, begin to raise up your voice right now. Begin to walk, begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to prevail, begin to travail, begin to warn, begin to groan, begin to call upon his name, begin to thank him, begin to say thank you, begin to prophesy, begin to declare Rando Kosi Kalabada, Rege de Gebo Sandaya, Ashanto Rote Kele, Ikotala Mandaya, on the 27th of January, we will come, Lord, who prayer, who fasting, and we'll bring you our first fruit, our sacrificial first fruit, and so me and my sons, and my daughter, and this house, we will build an altar, we will build a memorial for us and our children, and the generation to come, in the name of Jesus, continue to pray, in Jesus' name, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Kaya mande berebo sakala. Ento sila bakaya. Egondo rengo de galagedo go shia baba. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.